for those of you who don't know Tasha and I, we are LiveWell's original clinical exercise physiologists and health coaches dating way back to 2011, um, meaning that in June of this year, we will be having our 10 year anniversary of LiveWell Exercise Clinic. Exciting. Time flies. And Sarah and I are super excited to um, have you join us today. I've seen some faces that have known us for a long time. Um, and we come on these calls to just share our passion about the power of exercise and behavior change to help you live your life to the fullest. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, you know, as Tasha said, we get to see many of your faces on these calls. And it's exciting to see faces from across Canada join us every single week on our Live with Sarah and Tasha episodes. Um, just a reminder, if you can see yourself on the screen, it means that we can all see you. We love to see your face. Um, but uh, if you feel comfortable, open up those video cameras and let us see your face. If not, it's totally fine. You can just spectate and listen in um, and enjoy today. All right. So if at any time you want to jump in the conversation, the chat function is open. So please feel free to use that if you have questions or comments throughout. Sarah and I always leave time um, to chit chat and answer questions towards the end. So let's get started. Today's topic is rewarding yourself. And this is a really important part of the change process. But unfortunately, it's also something that most of us neglect to do and you know change is hard you know does anybody agree with me give me the shake the hands yeah change is hard right but so we can do hard things that's we can the do hard things we can do hard things that's right my my kids teacher always says that to them we can do hard things um but the key is to be able to celebrate ourselves along the way to help keep us motivated, right? Because if we are always just waiting, 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 it's hard to stay engaged with that change process. And rewarding ourselves is a way that we can keep our motivation high. And are we always looking for ways to become more motivated? But this reward structure is a way to do that. So today, what Sarah and I want to do is give you a set of guiding principles that can just help you um, use rewards in a way that's healthy and productive and won't sabotage your efforts. Because often when we think of rewards, we think of, yeah. <laughs> Pat did this. I don't know if it was, you know, a specialty coffee or if it was a glass of wine or food. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Rewards have showed up in my life before as blizzards. I think I've shared with you that I had quite a few blizzards when I was pregnant with my son. And that was a hard one to break. Chocolate. I see in the chat. Love it. A lot of people using. So we're going to talk about um, ways to reward ourselves. Um, and one of our rules of reward that we'll talk about today is how to get away from using food. So first rule of reward is number one. Ready? Got your pens? Reward the behavior, not the outcome. And you hear us talking at LiveWell about behavior, behavior, behavior all the time. And that's because your behaviors are truly the only thing that you have any control over, right? The outcome is up to your biology, your life circumstances are going to play in there. Um, so really, your behavior is all you have control over. And that's why you, that's where you need to focus your rewards. So true success comes from changing our habits and our habits are all about behaviors. So don't wait till you actually see an outcome from your behavior to reward yourself because often that's just too far down the road. And if we don't reward ourselves sooner, that journey, that day-to-day -day behavior change work that you're doing becomes thankless. Mm 
mm-hmm. and we get tired and discouraged and and it feels like it's going to take a really long time to get where we're going and that's when we start saying I'm losing my motivation. I don't know what happened. I just lost my motivation. So we need to kind of reward ourselves um, more frequently. And we'll talk about time in a bit, but, but making it attached to that behavior rather than the outcome. So um, I think that's kind of all I, I wanted to say about that piece. I could give a bit of an example on this one if we want, Tash. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, I think that uh, for for um, most of us, I think that we could relate this to weight, weight loss, weight management, stepping on the scale, these types of things. Um, and um, really, when it comes to our weight, sometimes we are so focused on the outcome um, and the numbers, and that really we we um, can focus on the behaviors and rewarding the behaviors because oftentimes that outcome it takes time, right? It takes a long time for that to happen, and so if we actually wait to reward the outcome, we lose our motivation because we've simply just waited too long. Um, but but truly, kind of what are the behaviors that we did today and right now? in order to achieve that, when we actually reward those, um, we it, it, it kind of helps to keep us, as Tasha said, motivated or engaged or on track, right? Um, which brings us even to our second rule, conveniently, um, which is kind of reward in the here and now. Um, I think that, you know, as a culture, we are all about kind of instant gratification and instant feedback. Um, you know, we used to have to write letters and put them in the post and they would take two weeks to get somewhere at the best. And then that person would have to write back. It would take a month through a, a, the most efficient process to hear back from someone. Now we can send someone a text message. And if we haven't heard back in five minutes, we're quite frustrated. So <laughs> I hope we're more patient than that. But you know, you know, the example that I'm trying to give there. Um, and so really in the here and now, we want to make sure that we can reward ourselves and give ourselves that affirmation that we need in order to feel good. And waiting until a future date obviously can be a little bit problematic because we do lose that motivation. Um, and, and so if we even think of this as, you know, a, a child who is doing a good behavior, we would never wait a week to go back and tell that child Little Billy, you did great last Wednesday where you really stuck with, you know, practicing in, in baseball practice, even though you weren't able to hit that ball. I'm really proud of you. Really having that meaningful conversation and that affirmation in the moment is so important. Sarah, and- I just realized I've been doing it all wrong with my kids, right? But when you bring home that better grade, you'll get that reward. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah good I one right rewarding daily homework such yes. a good point that that's such a good that is such a good point um I had a very negative reward system when I was in university and that was that every time that 30 minutes passed of studying I ate five M&Ms um <laughs> but we'll it was about we'll talk about that in our we'll next. talk about that later I've grown that was a long time ago I now know more about this um, so, um, rewards, uh, when they're closely coupled with actually the behavior that we are trying to influence, um, are, are more effective and, and truly work best. So, so for example, I will reward myself with a new outfit once I've exercised three times a month might actually be, um, uh, less, um, effective for us than if we say, you know, if it's about exercise, rewarding ourselves with, you know, then I'll, I'll exercise with someone that I, that I love to socialize with. I'll go for that walk with Tasha at the, at the beach. I'll, we'll go on our, our park walk and enjoy walking together and socializing and truly enjoying that. For me, I'm a quality time person. And so some of this is kind of, if anyone knows about our, our, our love language, some of it is like meeting ourselves in our own love language really helps us to determine what our reward is for ourselves. And, and I'm a quality time person. And so I know that that helps to fill my reward bucket. Um, immediate rewards, 
they really help to elevate our, our, our mood um, and um, really help us to kind of light those sparklers in our brain. So if we want to relate this to our experience at Live Well, um, we can think of our wins in the clinic, those wins that we share and so important for us to celebrate ourselves in that moment, in that session. What is something that we did today? And I love even seeing the wins on the wall that just say, I showed up today. How many of us can relate or have wanted to or have written a win that said I showed up today because they knew that showing up today was actually really, really hard, but I showed up and that is a huge accomplishment in and of itself. And so um, recognize there's a method to the madness. Yes. Wins in all these little circles. Um, and the idea there is to capitalize on these immediate rewards. So yeah. maybe how you're feeling in that moment, it's connecting with something that you're proud of. And, and the wins are a way of really encouraging you to do that. And did you know that each clinic has a goal of having at least one win per member per month. But if you're on this call, I wanna challenge you to make sure that you have one win on that wall per week, right? Find it, mine for it, because the more, the more you pat yourself on the back immediately, the, the more benefit that you're going to get out of it. And it can feel like tooting your own horn, but I've even heard um, BJ Fogg, who's a, I believe he's at Stanford, but he's a, a behavioral change, um, I'll mess up his title here. He's a but he's in behavioral change psychology of some sort. And um, he says as much as even just going, getting off that treadmill or doing that exercise or whatever behavior it is and just going, you rock. And I think you've heard us talk about that in, in um, the education in the clinic before, giving that tip of just pumping yourself up, whether out loud, whether through a, like a body, he, he suggests having a trigger that says for you, well done, because that alone sparks something in your brain that um, draws upon that, that reward center. So it doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be elaborate, but frequency and as quickly as you can as many times as you can. Recognizing, wow, I really struggled with that exercise when they first gave it to me. And now um, I'm doing it quite easily. Recognize yourself. Really, really important. And, and I think that on the flip side of this, I think it's important for us to maybe identify or talk about or acknowledge that unhealthy or negative health behaviors like drinking, smoking, overindulging in food, they can also bring forward a sense of what feels like an immediate reward, right? And yeah. so that's why they become addictive and really hard to break. Um, uh, and it, it's interesting because um, there's some research done on looking at there's this an immediate reward with kind of negative health behaviors, but the offset is that kind of long term, the reward starts to feel really terrible pretty, it starts to feel not very good. Right. Yeah. Um, but when we have healthy, positive behaviors, the immediate reward is there and the long-term or offset reward is there. Um, and so important for us to know that we need to set ourselves up to build positive health behaviors with immediate rewards. And that will be how you get hooked on building healthy habits faster. Yeah, great segue into our third rule, which we've kind of already a little bit alluded to, which is don't reward with food or food is not a reward. And, and the idea here is that, yes, there is, there's lots of food can be rewarding. As Sarah said, drink can be rewarding. The difficulty is that our relationship with food is complicated right? We eat as reward. Some of us eat as punishment. Um, we eat for comfort. So we have all of this emotion tied up in food. And, and we, want, we don't want 
food to be dragging us around um, that we're going to it as our go-to reward system? Like how many times have you found yourself saying, you know, I deserve this before you go to eat something, right? If you're saying I deserve this, you're using this food as a reward system for yourself or I've earned this. And please never say I've earned and then put a food something after because of your exercise session. Because as one of these talks, Sarah and I will get into, you know, exercise can be um, counterintuitive that way. You feel like you've spent all this energy and then you discover that you, your piece of cheesecake would have meant that you needed to stay on that treadmill for another two and a half hours rather than the half an hour that you were so on. True example so you know so disappointing so disappointing Sarah and I really wish we had better news there for you but um and and I think so often we're treats are used in our childhood like you know if if you behave well you're going to get ice cream or you know if you get I talk to my kids all the time and their teachers are using um, treats, candy, and things like that as a reward for good behavior or, or good work at school. And so that starts creating a connection for us very young. And so many of us maybe already have this food as a treat pathway kind of ingrained in our, in our psyche. And so we slowly have to make the conscious decision to stop rewarding ourselves with food and to find other ways to reward ourselves that can give us that same feeling of comfort, that same feeling of well done, um, so that we can allow our eating patterns to be triggered by our hunger rather than by a, a, an emotion. So I think that's a really big one. Um, you know, if we felt that treat foods, you know, if you feel like I really need to treat myself and you think of an apple, well, then don't worry about what I'm saying here and you just go ahead and continue to do what you're doing. But for most of us, it's these comfort foods, right? Whether that's sugar or salt for you or, you know, something um, that, that it, it typically has a connotation of something that we know isn't terribly healthy for us. And there's nothing wrong with eating those foods in sort of moderation. The key is that you want, when you choose those foods, you want to be making them as a conscious choice that I'm choosing to have that and include that in my diet at this time, not because it's linked to a reward pattern for you. So I think that's really important. Let's not confuse food's place in our life by giving it the power of reward because there's just so many other creative ways that we can reward ourselves. I love that last part that you just said, Tasha. Let's not give food the ability to be like get not give food the power to be a reward. I, I actually, I really, really like that. Um, and so our last kind of guiding principle or tip um, is to make it meaningful. And again, something that connects to your values, something that is meaningful to you, something that edifies your life. Um, so this means that you have to really take the time to think about this. Um, you know, one of our um, healthy habits, or, uh, you know, around nutrition is to be planned and prepared, you know, be, be a nutrition scout. And really, we need to be planned and prepared around our rewards, or else we might fall into some of these rewards that are a little bit more like kind of gut reaction, right? And so really thinking about what are those rewards? What are the ways that we can really think about, you know, um, a new pair of running shoes, though nice, and useful, they may not be the most powerful motivator for you. Maybe they are, right? But maybe they're not. So what is it that connects the most with you as a person? And so oftentimes our most meaningful um, rewards align with the values and the things that we enjoy the most. And again, I'll kind of go back to that example of, for me, it's typically things that are around quality time. It might just be going for a walk with a friend, sitting by the fire, um, 
you know, spending time talking and catching up, you know, all of those types of things for me are more meaningful rewards. So what is your love language? What is meaningful to you in relationships and your relationship with your healthy behaviors will be edified the same way. And so taking the time to identify what some of those rewards may be is just setting yourself up for success so that you don't kind of fall and creep into some of those rewards that um, seem a little bit more reactive, but tend to be more, more of those negative health behaviors. So those are our four guiding principles. Love it. Sarah, did you know I, I'm reading a, a, a book that came out in early 2020 called The Joy of Movement. Um, Kelly mm -hmm. McGonigal is a, a psychologist. And she, they've actually found that when you exercise so with somebody else so part of that you know that connection piece that exercise triggers an area of your brain that makes you feel more connected mm -hmm. so um the, what they were showing in this or reporting in this book was basically if you're exercising with somebody else chances are you will feel closer to them so if you've got somebody that a friend or a family member you know maybe go for a walk maybe that is a way to trigger these brain chemicals and these brain pathways that are set up for connection but what i thought was equally interesting is that they said even if you went out and did it on your own but then when you come back home you will feel more connected to the people who are there. There's that, that oxytocin release that you're going to feel um, like you're more cooperative and you're more. So I've been experimenting with that in my own life and going, you know, if I exercise towards the end of my day, um, rather than the beginning of my day, does that set me up to just be in a better headspace to receive my family in the week? or sorry, at the end of the day, you know, I was typically exercising in the morning before. And so that meant I was lovely with my colleagues, maybe that had kind of worn off by the time my family got home. So, you know, um, now I'm kind of switching that, that flip and seeing how that's working. And um, I have been told that I am a, I'm a little less reactive. So there's a and, and and now in the morning when I start to work with Tasha, it's, it's a little rough. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. You're still lovely. You're still lovely all the time. I think don't it, worry. I think it means just I'm gonna have to have several exercise sessions. At <laughs> yes. Hourly. Hourly. I love, love it. it. So um we do have um, some questions, uh, Tasha, that have come in um, over some time and that we we hear from our members um, regularly. So um, Tasha, maybe I'll point the first one um, at you. And if any of, of you on today's episode have questions, please feel free to type them into the chat and we will um, discuss them um, if we have time here. But Tasha, for you personally, what kinds of rewards do you put in place for yourself? Ooh, um, great question. I'm a bit of a knowledge. And don't say a blizzard. That's not allowed. It's not allowed. Rule number three. Um, I, I am a bit of a, I am somebody who loves to read and loves to, um, I love to read like, you know, like the joy of movement, like books like that, where I'm going to learn mm -hmm. something. Um, I'm kind of a lifelong learner that lights me up. So what I find really rewarding is I try to listen to audiobooks while I'm doing things that are not um, super um, motivating initially to me. Um, like let's say I'm cooking um, on days when I'd love to take out and things like that. And I just find it, it just makes the whole task easier for me to do and in fact I end up enjoying it and and um so that's something that recently I've been coupling and and I think Sarah and I are going to talk about habit coupling in a, in a thing that's coming up in the future but 
um, I've been coupling those two things together. Something that I know I need to do, it's a healthy habit, cooking regularly rather than taking out. Um, but if I do it with something that I enjoy, so I get that immediate reward, it's not so bad. So that's one of the things I'm using. And then I talked a little bit about um, exercise and, and not only the social portion of exercise, but um, I do find that I get a lot of immediate stress relief from, from mm -hmm. exercise. And so yeah. um, that's one of the things that I've really been paying attention to. And again, by going, yes, I did it and, and feeling that stress release that comes along with it, it just makes it easier to convince myself to go out and do the exercise, right? I, I really just focus on, on that piece of it. I, yeah, I see that um, Carrie Ann's mentioned that, you know, um, coffee, like uh, having that Monday coffee meetup with friends, that's a great one. And I know I've used things before, though coffee will, if we're not putting loads of cream and sugar in it, we'll, we'll take that off of the foods reward spectrum and put it in the no problem, let's use it spectrum. And um I know when I was trying to start a regular meditation habit, I wouldn't let myself have my morning coffee until I had done the meditation. So then it was like right away that coffee was a reward. Let's and so coupling those two together made it easier. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. I uh, I like to exercise first thing in the morning because I I I find that it gives me this kind of psychological um, release and, and openness for the rest of the day that I don't kind of have it running around in my head of when am I going to exercise? Oh no, I missed it. And then thinking about it all day, um, for, for me. And, and then after I exercise is when I treat myself to my Earl Grey tea, which I thoroughly enjoy. And I've recently learned in the last year that my grandfather also, quite learned, um, liked Earl Grey tea and had an entrepreneurial spirit. And so through these rewards, I have really connected also with my family. So there you go. You're learning about your heritage. I'm, I'm learning about my heritage through my own rewards. It's fabulous. So any other um, questions on this topic or sorry, Tash, were you going to say something? No, I just, you know, don't wait for that trip to Hawaii. Because, mm -hmm. you know, Maybe it ain't coming soon. Maybe the pandemic <laughs> this world. ain't going nowhere. <laughs> so we need to find little ways, little um, things that are meaningful in, in our day-to-day -day life that, that will make it that'll yeah. make it worth it. Exactly. So what are some things that you can do this week to live well and to take what we've learned today and put it into practice? The first one is probably really set aside some time to think about rewards and rewards that would be meaningful to you. And we're all going to be different. So really kind of think that even if you can think of one, two, just up to three rewards that would be meaningful to you. Um, and of course, do not forget to make a date with exercise. Exercise in and of itself has a built-in reward system of making you feel dynamo, amazing, wonderful. Um, and, um, you know, I would also encourage, like Tasha said, all of us on this call this week, when you're in the clinic with your live streaming in, share a win, get it up on the wall there, be, be an inspiration to yourself and affirm your own behaviors. And through that, you'll also be an inspiration to the other people in the room. Um, and don't forget to log into your member portal, set your weekly action plan and maybe try to come up with a way that you can immediately reward yourself this week for the healthy behavior that you are engaging in. And keep in mind that 30 million Canadians are not doing what you're doing. They are not practicing healthy behaviors every day. That in and of itself is a massive congratulations and affirmation for your positive behavior. Um, and so good job. <laughs> You're doing better than 30 million other people. I know that for sure, right? So those are some things you can do this week to help you to live well. 
And if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do. Um, and then if we, if you can't make it live for any of these episodes, you can always be sure to find uh, the replays on our YouTube channel. We are back next week at noon Pacific and 3 p.m. Eastern. And Sarah and I are gonna talk about blood pressure. I know we've been talking about it in clinic, but if you have questions or you know feel like you wanna dig into the topic a little bit more, um, please join us. And just thank you, uh, all of you, for joining us live today. We just love that. And if you're watching this replay um, and you're not a member, please head on over to our website at livewellclinic.ca. And we would love to invite you to be our guest and to experience what a Live Well Exercise Clinic session is all about. <laughs>